What's up guys, Rogue9 here and good news, I have finally completed my analysis of the weapons available to Clash and since I've been so slow in getting this done, I've even managed to include the changes since the last patch which significantly affected her ability to switch from shield to guns. I guess every cloud has its silver lining and all that, right? As always, I've compared the in-game stats for the guns and conducted additional tests to find out about the hidden stats behind each of the weapons. So when playing Clash, should you be running the P10C pistol or the SP SMG9? What are their individual strengths and weaknesses? Let's go and find out, shall we? But before we get into that, I want to take a quick moment to thank Mastrop for sending me one of these Sennheiser PC37X gaming headsets to try out. Those of you who follow my Twitch streams will have seen me using it over the last few weeks and I have to say I'm really happy with it. Sennheiser is of course known for great quality speakers and great quality speakers translate into great audio. I wear this headset basically every time I'm at my PC, whether I'm working, streaming, playing, editing. Literally anything, I've got these on and I can wear them for hours at a time with absolutely zero discomfort. They're super light, excellently padded. I would definitely say that this headset is a great solution for anyone looking for a headphone and mic combo. But don't just take my word for it. The item currently has 428 reviews on the Mastrop website with a near perfect score of almost 5 out of 5 stars. So if you're in the market for a great quality headset, I can definitely recommend the PC37Xs. And if you use the link that is shown on screen now and in the description below, you're showing Mastrop that you came from me and you're supporting the channel. And with that, let's talk about Clash. As a shield operator, she of course only has access to sidearms, but unlike any other operator in the past, she has access to a two-shot burst fire machine pistol as well as the regular semi-auto pistol used by most other operators. In the past, having the choice between a pistol and a machine pistol was never really a choice. Machine pistols have always been vastly superior up until the recent recall changes, but with Clash, her options have been designed from the ground up to be far more balanced. Let's start things off simple by examining the in-game info for both guns. The P10 does 40 points of baseline damage versus 30 for the SMG9. When suppressed, the P10 will deal 34 points while the SMG9 does 25, which is around about a 15% reduction for both guns. Fire rate for the P10 is semi-auto, but of course from past tests we know that it will be around 450 RPM under combat conditions, although I have managed to clock in up to 486 RPM when clicking just about perfectly. The fire rate for the SMG9 is listed as 980, but the gun does not have a full auto mode. Instead, you have to fire two shot bursts, and when I tested this in game, I found that the rate at which you can put out these bursts is exactly the same at which you fire semi auto pistols. Since every pull of the trigger gives you two shots, that would suggest that the true maximum fire rate for semi-autos is around 490 RPM. This fits in perfectly with my near-perfect run of 486 RPM, but to me this remains a theoretical value since getting a perfect clicking sequence while also trying to fight a moving target is extremely difficult for most players, especially when using a regular console controller. What does this mean for all of my later calculations? Well, instead of the max maximum 980 RPM listed in game, I will instead be using a more realistically achievable fire rate of 900 RPM and that's still pretty decent by most standards. Next up, uh, okay, let's do this. For the sake of the sanity of the viewer, analysis of the mobility stat has been cut from the final presentation. So, I know that spending 32 minutes on this might be considered excessive, but I hope that clears it up once and for all. Moving on. Capacity of the P10 is pretty average at 15 plus 1 and the SMG9 can hold 20 plus 1, giving the latter a bit of an advantage. In terms of attachments, both weapons have access to the muzzle brake, suppressor and laser, while the SMG also gets the choice of the flash hider if that's the kind of thing that floats your boat. Both weapons also have pre-attached red dot sights which, although not magnified, will offer a somewhat better sight picture than the iron sights. At least that's the case for most of the weapons in Rainbow Six and I assume it is probably the same here. 
And now, let's dig a little deeper into some of the less obvious stats so that I can finally get into the meaty part of this discussion. I'll put all of the important numbers on screen for you now and then I will go over the implications one by one. As always, I tested and analyzed the damage drop-off, reload speed, fire rate, hip fire spread, ADS time and specific to clash, also the switch time from shield to gun. When comparing the P10 and SMG9, the damage drop-off rates don't really tell us anything that we couldn't already have guessed from the baseline stats. The P10 is more powerful for each shot than the SMG at pretty much all ranges, despite the earlier pistol drop-off range of 12 to 22 meters. The SMG9 compensates for this though by firing two shots at a time which effectively doubles its damage output as long as both shots land on target. I have calculated the full battery of damage per second, shots to down or kill and time to down or kill stats and as always you can look these up in the online spreadsheet. The summary of that analysis when comparing the two guns is that while the shots to kill are always higher for the SMG9, the time to kill is always lower because of the doubled up fire rate. All of this of course assuming that all shots will hit the upper body. And before moving on, one more thing to note here is the comparison of each gun to other guns in its class. Compared to other pistols, the P10 is just about the weakest you can find with the exception of the Polish RG15. And just like with the RG15, I believe that the attached red dot sight is there to balance out the disappointing damage output. Comparing the SMG9 to other machine pistols gives us the same result. In terms of pure damage output and time to kill stats, the SMG is by far the weakest machine pistol in the game and its only redeeming factor is that maybe the forced burst fire mode actually makes the gun far more controllable than other machine pistols after the recent nerf. So the bottom line is that while the SMG9 provides a slightly better damage output than the P10, both of Clash's guns are pretty bad compared to the weapons available to other operators. I've already mentioned the capacity and there's nothing much to add here so over to the reload speed. The 2.2 seconds taken by the P10 for a full reload is bang on average for semi-automatic pistols and the 1.9 seconds tactical reload is only just above the 1.8 second semi-auto average. As you might expect, the slightly clunkier SMG9 reloads a bit slower with 2.7 seconds full and 2.2 seconds tactical reload. Interestingly, the averages for the machine pistols are 2.8 seconds and 2 seconds respectively, giving the new gun a relatively good full reload but disappointing tactical reload. Fire rate has already been discussed and ADS time is pretty straightforward as well. 200 milliseconds is the standard time for pistols while 300 milliseconds is the standard for both primary and secondary SMGs. Nothing unusual here but it is worth noting that with times to down of between 200 and 300 milliseconds for both guns against various distance and target combinations, a 100 millisecond advantage for the P10 goes an awfully long way in balancing out the TTK advantages of the SMG9. In fact, in most cases, ADS and TTK added together will in fact be longer for the SMG than for the P10. Full details in the spreadsheet. Now going over to the shield switching time, from a comparison perspective, there is not a lot to say really. It takes 2 seconds to switch from gun to shield and 1 second to switch from shield to gun no matter which weapon you choose. This is only the case since the recent patch though. Before that you were able to shoot faster than the switching animation but since that's been fixed it's simply 1 second for both guns and that's irrespective of whether or not you hip fire or ADS after the switch. For recoil management the results are quite curious since the baseline recoil for the P10 is significantly worse than that of the SMG9 but once you use the best possible recoil reducing attachments the P10 actually overtakes the SMG9. So in conclusion since there is no point in running a naked gun the P10 will always be better when going in loud but will be more difficult to handle than the SMG9 when both guns are suppressed. And with that we go over to our final couple of criteria. Like all pistols, the P10 will provide Clash with a 5% movement speed bonus when equipped while the SMG9 has no effect on speed. 5% may not sound like a lot but in a game where movement speed can decide gunfights every little bit counts so this can definitely go in the plus column for the P10. 
Last and probably least important, let's take a quick look at the hipfire spreads. Hipfire is really not viable in most situations in Rainbow Six, but heck, let's look at it anyway for completeness sake. When standing still, the spread of both guns is 100% identical. Stationary and kneeling or prone, the P10 has a slight advantage, but once you start moving, the pistol becomes significantly worse. And since movement is so important, I would actually give the SMG9 the win here, despite being at a slight disadvantage when kneeling or lying down. Conclusion time, and if we tot up the wins for each weapon, the P10 has better reload times, ADS times, recoil when loud, and movement speed, while the SPSMG9 has better damage output, ammo capacity, recoil when suppressed, and hipfire spread. Each gun wins in 4 out of 8 categories, giving us a numerical draw. Can we simply weight each category equally? No, probably not, but from a purely empirical perspective, I find it hard to claim that, for instance, damage output is more important than recoil or ADS time, so it's quite hard for me to judge. Uh, beyond this, I would say that, irrespective of the wins and losses here, the performance of the two guns in all categories is actually pretty closely matched. The days when operators were introduced with a practically redundant pistol option and a vastly superior machine pistol are well and truly gone. It appears that a lot of thought and effort has been put into balancing the P10C and SPSMG9, and as much as I feel that this is kind of a cop-out, I would personally conclude that both guns are pretty much equally viable options and the choice will boil down to personal preference for each player. What are your thoughts on these guns? Do you have a favourite out of the two? Let me know in the comments section below. Many thanks to everyone who has sent in clips to be featured in my videos. I've had a great time going over your highlights and will be looking into spinning out a new video series that will allow me to feature more of your awesome clips, so feel free to keep them coming. Send me an email to mail at rogue-9.com with a link to a YouTube video of your clip and please also include a brief description of what I'll be looking for. Your operator, number of kills and any special occurrences in the clip would be great to know so that I can gather the clips as efficiently as possible. And with that, as always, thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next episode.